great American road trip. You've seen your friends Instagramming about it, right? Your roommate who had the best barbecue ever in Kansas City. Your sorority sisters who did the topless thing at Yosemite. Here in New England, we're hard-pressed for the wide-open deserts, plains, and abandoned gas stations of the American West. We do, however, have one state whose beauty rivals wherever the smug stoners camping out on Oregon's beaches would tell you to go. Brace yourself for the ultimate Maine road trip. I'm Dustin, that's Rachel, she's Julia. Three occasionally clueless 20-year-olds who work at a TV station. We're a reporter, producer, and photographer who got the chance to explore Maine, meet the people succeeding, the people struggling, and find out just what is there to do and see in a state almost as quirky as we are. In other words, we saw Maine by the mile. No Maine road trip is complete without a visit to one of the state's 4,600 islands. One in particular, Matinicus, is the most remote island on the U.S. East Coast that people actually live on. The island is four square miles of land, 20 miles off the coast. Getting to such a faraway place can be a hassle since you can only go by plane or boat. took a ferry out to Matinicus from Rockland, Maine and chartered a boat back because the uh, <clears throat> lawyers at our company were worried about us flying. If you choose the ferry option, you'll see right away it's all business on board. You'll find yourself among the builders, contractors, and odds and ends dealers who need to move big items on and off Matinicus. On certain days, you'll find this U-Haul on the ferry and along with it, Eva Murray. Sometimes being on the bow is not a real fun place to be on a rough day because it's slam, yeah. slam. There's all this water coming in. I've had trips where it's like going through a car wash for two solid hours, you know, it feels like you're in a submarine. 30 years ago, Eva went to Matinicus for the first time. She liked the island electrician so much, she decided to marry him. Decades later, she's entrenched in the community and among other things is unapologetically the island trash lady. There's no dripping, rotting, nasty goo coming out of it or anything. So That's good. You haul agents need not worry. But yeah, it will go back to the mainland with easily a ton anyway of um, refuse. refuse. Yeah. There is a myth that everybody on an island is either a very wealthy summer resident or a complete outlaw. And Eva is neither of those. She is, however, a baker propane dealer, and could probably fix your roof with a pair of scissors if you let her try. She's also the master of no BS straight talk. Somebody will call up who's never been there and wants to come to Matinicus for whatever reason, and they'll say, what time's the morning boat? And I'll say, uh, there is no morning boat. No, what time's your ferry get in? And, you know, and I'll say, well, we had our ferry for the month already last Tuesday. Oh, well, how do you get back and forth? I said, air service. They go, well, I don't like to fly. Well, this is not about how you like to get here. People tend to love it or hate it. It's, it's, it's either they're in love and they can't wait to come back, or they're like, get me off of this rock. It's easy to see why you could love or hate a place that doesn't have any stores to buy food at, requires gas be brought out by delivery boat, and forces you to figure out a way to fix any problem you encounter yourself. Tell me when. You have to plan ahead and, you know, there is some forward thinking and pre-planning on stuff when you're living out here, you know, it's, it's not all going to happen right now. Unfortunately for Rachel and Julia, planning ahead is not one of my best skills. We have no cash because the cash machine at the ferry terminal was broken. No, it was just out of cash or something. Broken. Okay, broken. It's really not the time to correct me. There's no food here. Um, quick question. I know you don't have much, but what do you have from the bakery? Anything? Oh, come on. Okay. Come on Luckily, with some bartering, I was able to secure us lunch before the team decided lunch would be me. But what Matinicus lacks in fast food, coffee shops, and ATMs, it certainly makes up for in wildlife. Maine is the only state on the East Coast where you can see Atlantic puffins. While Icelanders may look at these penguin rubber ducky hybrids and see dinner, conservationists in Maine see a success story. Puffins had basically vanished from Maine, but have made a big comeback thanks to decades of hard work by biologists. Captain George Tarkelson runs the only tours way out past Matinicus to this barren heath called Matinicus Rock. There's about half an hour of puffin watching time on George's 90-minute tour, and it costs about 160 bucks. If you've got six friends, that's about $27 a piece. Be warned, Matinicus Rock is basically all the way out in the open ocean, so you may want to pack some Dramamine. This thing goes pretty fast. It does. 
My equilibrium is a little topsy-turvy right now. Definitely almost threw up on some puffins back there. Oh my god. Besides bird watching, there really isn't all that much to do in the way of activities on Matinicus. You'll have to entertain yourself with, say, a board game. But that's sort of the island's charm. The beaches are empty, dogs roam about off-leash, and the only place to buy souvenirs is the church basement. Living out on an island comes with a very literal price. If you want something from Amazon, you have to ship it on a plane. If you want Chinese takeout food, ship it on a plane. If you need to get off the island right away, take a plane. And where there's a plane, there's a pilot. We've, in, in our best days, we removed two whole houses. Uh, dimensional lumber, concrete, shingles, the whole shooting match. All the islanders told us Kevin Waters is their hero. Kevin owns Owl's Head-based Penobscot Island Air, the lifeline from Atinicus to the mainland. It's a 10-minute plane ride to the island, which means Kevin's the guy to call to get you to the hospital or make sure that new vacuum you bought on Amazon makes it to your door. Before Amazon and things like that, yeah. how full would you get? We'd probably take uh, uh, a mail load, say mail, which is what we'll do, would be probably half of this one island, or sometimes you could even go to two islands with all the mail. Now it's sometimes two airplanes to go to one island. We'll probably do five flights today, just with UPS going to two islands. Flying Penobscot Island Air one way to Matinicus costs 60 bucks. That's just one of many expenses islanders have to contend with to live in such a beautiful place. Running your own diesel-fueled power plant ain't cheap. We run about the highest rate of electricity rate in the United States. So if we could get the electric rate down lower, that would really help a lot, especially for the year-rounders, because in the winter, um, when you have the lights on a lot more and other things, it's really a, a low electric bill out here in the, in the winter would be $200. And uh, in the summer, many people go in three or $400. To pay for your big electric bill, you might catch lobsters. Most people on Matinicus do that for work, and lobster fishing even affects the island's population. In the winter, when fishing's slow, many lobstermen head to the mainland. That means the number of people on Matinicus can drop from as high as 100 during the summer to as low as 20 to 40 people in February and March. If you stay at the illustrious KP Hall, our Airbnb of choice, you'll likely meet a lobsterman. Josh Ames and his girlfriend own and rent out the place we stayed at. For $110 a night, you get enough room for you and four of your comrades to crash, plus a nice big kitchen to eat these guys. Seems like we're getting a few more people doing like the one night stay. We have the people that come and they'll do a whole week, but we're getting a lot more one night. And is it kind of people like us who are sort of just curious what the heck's here? Yeah, oh yeah, we've seen people from New York and all kinds of different places. If you're a farm to table type of guy like me, ocean to mouth is just as good. Oh yeah, they bite, yeah. At five bucks a pop, you heard me right, five bucks a pop, Josh will hand deliver the fattest, juiciest lobsters you've ever had kept Julia and Rachel from getting hungry for the rest of the night. As much as we would have liked to stay for a week on Matinicus, we only had about 24 hours. Our advice, go and go prepared. It'll be expensive, but you'll get a glimpse of life on a remote island. Is there a designated fire team here? Like first responders? Everybody. Everybody. Along with the colorful bumper stickers and the smallest town library you've ever seen, you'll find a deep sense of peace a deep sense of quiet. If you had to pick the most awesome thing about this place, what is it? The remoteness, sense of solitude. Matinicus, while a working island, really is an escape from the avocado toast guzzling, Twitter warring world just 20 miles away, though that library does have Wi-Fi. If you do feel the urge to tune back in to your mainland chaos while you're on your visit, you might as well check out the campsites, mountain views, and stuffed bears we found next time on Maine by the Mile.